Hello, and welcome to Questions to Some Christians, Part 10. This is going to be the last part in the series, at least for a while. And today's question is, since faith is emotional and not rational, why would anyone educated or intelligent believe in God? Well, barring the easy answer, that there have been highly intelligent and educated men and women from the Old Testament days to even today that believe in God, I'm going to take this both from a philosophical and religious perspective, as I enjoy the study of both. Yes, there are a lot of Christians who are almost entirely emotion-based with their faith, and typically they don't like religious discussion, and as it turns out, many times their lack of spiritual maturity is quickly shown. But the Bible actually condemns that level of belief. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14 read, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk, and not solid food. For anyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Regardless of a Christian's physical age, the writer differentiates those who are babes or unskilled in the word, those who focus on the emotional or the surface level of God's word, and those who are able to teach others, those who can discern what is good and evil, which is a more rational approach. Those who believe Christianity is not rational must not have known very many strong Christians, because there are many passages in the Bible about ethics and morality. Proverbs is full of ethics and morality. Ecclesiastes helps us put our lives in focus and perspective, and Job is, by and large, written as a logical debate based on the moral norms of that time. In the New Testament, we have examples of people reasoning together, Jesus calls us to be salt and light in Matthew chapter 6. How can we be either if we lack the wisdom and intellect to reach others and through our influence glorify God? The reason for spiritual gifts was to confirm the word those individuals were preaching. It is the reasoning those people did that saved souls. Paul reasoned with the Jews in the synagogue. That doesn't discredit emotions, though. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we should feel the same every time we go to worship. It's a combination of emotions and rationality that gives us the excitement we should feel when we're growing spiritually. And it is that excitement, that fire under us, that makes us want to use what we know to reason with others. That makes us want to share God's word with others. Jesus, in speaking to the Samaritan woman in John 4, has this exchange with her in verses 24 through 26. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I, who speak to you, am he. We worship God not only in spirit, but in truth. And how can we worship what we do not believe in our minds to be true? I'll take it one step further. 1 John 5, starting in verse 1, reads, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. We don't feel that Jesus is a Christ and born of God. We believe it. And we not only love, which is emotion, God, but we keep his commandments, which implies that we are to know his commandments. Otherwise, how can we know that we're keeping his commandments? Moving further to verses 12 and 13 of the same chapter, we read, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, 
and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. We must know we have the Son to have life. We must believe in the name of Jesus that we can know that we have eternal life and that we continue to believe in the name of Jesus. All of that is rationality. Our faith is to be logical, yes, but we can't fully discredit emotion either. Our, fo our faith is to have emotion, yes, but we can't use it to mask our ignorance of God's word or cause us to fear sharing it with others. Just like faith without works is dead, one without the other is just as dead. We can be emotional about God as much as we'd like, but without a solid rational basis behind it, we lack the depth to really reason with others. We can have a solid logical foundation, but without the excitement in our love for God and for humanity, we may as well be robots or worse, neglecting to share God's word with others because they'll never understand it.